Welcome home. This is Audio EXP for the 3rd of February, and the episode title is Ghosts and Crime. Terry Mandana won the February vote, and I've yet to get in touch, but I will this week, and I'll see where we get. Thanks to all Geek Native's patrons for their support and their votes. It's the start of the month, which means we can list the five candidates people will be voting for this time round. There is Rar, I'm a Monster Publishing, Christian Blair, Greg Bruni, Lunar Shadows Designs, and Gibola Designs. Voting, of course, happens over at Patreon. Now, some good news, or maybe some bad news going away. The Daily Digest email was unpaused last night. I don't know what I did to fix it. I've been trying for days and getting more and more desperate. The previous email was nearly a week old, and it had been sent successfully, but it was still marked as unsent in the mail queue. I even tried stopping it and starting it again. Isn't that what Rob from IT always says to do? In the end, I think that deleting the last successful but stuck in limbo email might have been the power move needed. Certainly, I got the Daily Digest last night, and with a bit of luck, we'll get it again tonight. Not in limbo, but where do you think Duncan Jones has been since directing the World of Warcraft movie in 2016? Well, he did moot in 2018, which missed my radar, and then that year his wife gave birth to their second kid. Duncan Zowie Hayward Jones is the son of David Bowie, and is now attached to another British treasure. He's directing a 2000 AD movie. It's not Judge Shredd. It will be Rogue Trooper. This machine in a movie, that's one made from computer game engines, tells the story of one surviving super soldier from a failed invasion on a revenge quest. His gun, helmet and backpack contain the personalities of his killed in action squaddies. The cast includes Sean Bean, Matt Berry, Asa Butterfield, Hayley Atwell and Rogue Trooper himself will be played by the newcomer Arnwen Barnard. I'm keen on a movie that Bronwyn has been tracking, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. Controversially, I liked the female remake and the most recent Afterlife more than I liked Ghostbusters 2. Frozen Empire seems to be a mix of the original two plus Afterlife. Not that making movies is easy and that I'm that critical of Ghostbusters 2. I had my own awkward experience in front of the camera this week while trying to record a short clip to highlight that Gooey Cube's The Tomb of Geisengax is open for registration ahead of its crowdfunder. I animated some art from the award-winning Shadows and Gensicon, which was a learning curve, and then did a talking headpiece. The main challenge was my dusty fan of a PC that I'm too timid to fix, and in doing so might confirm that the fan isn't entirely mounted straight. It makes so much noise that the microphone picks it up unless I have the microphone slammed in my face. Yes, right now I'm up close and a radio personal to the guard on the mic. Nevertheless, The Tomb of Guys and Gags is a collaboration with Luke Gygax, and therefore one to watch. And according to one report, it's getting harder out there in crowdfunding land. Bronwyn wrote up tabletop analytics report on Kickstarter, which noted that revenues are down again, down 30% compared to the pre-Covid era. Does this mean we fall back so many board games that we need to stop or run out of space? I actually honestly think that might be part of it, and the dire economic situation might be another. But Kickstarter also has more competitors, with companies like GameFound growing and Backakick launching their own platform. Kickstarter is also no longer sharing all its data, and tabletop analytics had been collecting it by themselves, maybe by scraping the site. This of course means they don't know how many pledges were actually collected. Geek Native also collects Kickstarter data for tabletop role-playing games and a sample of related projects like Dice, STL or the occasional gaming table. And this week, we tracked a huge zine quest boom. Our Kickstarter heat score hit 508. Now, last week it was only 181, but that is the highest it's been for months. However, in mid-February last year, we got the all-time high of 614, So let's see what happens for the rest of this month. 
Now, there is a bridge here from Kickstarter money to the lack of money, which caused one Cumbrian student to steal from Games Workshop. Down south, it's made local news, with people mocking the young man for ruining his life over plastic dolls. That's a term they used. However, the student, who I am not naming, was depressed. He was living with his partner, who we relied on for money, as a family row meant he had been unable to collect his student loan. He had PTSD due to being beaten and bullied at school previously. I'm not saying shoplifting isn't a crime and that stealing Warhammer models is the same as stealing food. Still, I'm glad his sentence was suspended, so if he keeps a perfectly clear track record from now and pleases the authorities, he probably won't go to jail. Lastly, I have just one bundle deal to tell you about, and it's also a Kickstarter that I backed but I'm yet to play. It's also a story of how society judges people. At the bundle of holding right now, you can get the Jane Austen-inspired Good Society TTRPG bundle. And on that note, avoid ghosts and gossip, and see you next week.